Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. In today's video, we're not going to be going over the best character in Smash Health, but, but rather we're going to be going over the best player bases for some of these characters. Every single character at some level has a little bit of relevancy in the top level of Smash Health, but now obviously some characters get a lot more representation than others, and those are the characters that you're probably going to see on this list, but there's definitely certain top tiers in this game that have way more super top reps playing them, despite being lower on the tier list, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the best kind of group group of players that all main one character. So just a fair warning, a majority of the characters in this video are going to be top tiers because you don't really have a ton of low tier slash mid tier characters that have a ton of reps at the top level because the character just isn't as good. Like for example, Jigglypuff, that isn't a character you're going to be seeing making every single top 8 with a bunch of different reps, but a character like Palutena, for example, who is way better and has a lot more representation, it's going to be way easier to pick players from, and that's actually who we're going to be starting with now. My top 5 Palutena players are Chase, Jigaimo, Luis, Chag, and Jen. This list is ever changing. I'd say your top 2 are definitely Jigaimo and Chase, but I also want to give a shout out to C, who recently had an amazing weekend at high res, most specifically getting a win over Zomba, which is insanity, but I want to start off by talking about Jen, who also did pretty well at high res, getting a 13th place there, also got 2nd place at the come up, only losing the riddles, a 49th at collision, 49th at Genesis, but a 9th place at Let's Make Big Blue. so he starts off the year insanely strong. Jen is a player we see a ton at the major level. Again, he only has three majors under his belt this season, but he has some of the best peaks of the character with that knife. At less, make big moves. You have Chag as well. Also hasn't been incredibly active, but he's 25th at Battle of BC recently. 17th at Crown, I would say. It's his best result as a late getting wins on players like Cosmos, Sticky, Valor, and a couple other ones. 17th at King of Fields. 5th at Sly Land. So he doesn't have any top 8s at majors this year, but Chag is a player, especially that we know from the past, like 2021, 2022, that is insane. He hasn't been as active. He hasn't been going to as many majors, but if he wanted to super try it again and turn on the Jets, I think he could become a top 30 player easily again in the world. Like Chag is ridiculously talented. Luis as well, who's also been making a nice comeback. Paul Tate is a character that I feel like is just coming back into the meta more recently. Luis has a second place at Iris. 5th place at Wave Dash, 17th at Crown the 3rd, and he actually gets a huge win at Gateway Legends over players like Lima, Apollo Kage, Base Mage. Luis has been looking incredible as of late, but the top two reps of the character are definitely Jigaimo and Chase, and I would give Chase that number one rep, but we gotta talk about Jigaimo because he's been doing really well. 17th at Umabora, 9th at Subgeki 13, he actually wins Delta 3, which was a pretty big regional. 5th place at Delta 4 as well, which was a major event, 17th at Subgeki 14, and a couple other events, but I would say that Chase is is going to be your number one rep, especially with his recent placements, like a fourth place at Wave Dash, a seventh place at Crown with wins over players like Luis, T, Light, Valor, Monty, like he went off that tournament, as well as a seventh place at Major Upset with wins on players like Embo Z, Ouch, Joe the Hobo, fifth place at DreamHack. Chase has a lot of good results and he's been getting better and better. And Paul Atin is a character that the results have still been getting better. I feel like we were going to see them fall off super hard. Everyone, you know, Incineroar versus Palutena, everyone was talking about that on Twitter, and it was honestly favoring Incineroar a lot in those conversations. People were not having a lot of faith in this character, but Palutena, they are still sticking around. They're still getting some really good results, and it makes sense because you have so many amazing reps playing. Also, I should mention that this video is not ordered in any particular way, but if I did have to pick the best player base of one character, I would probably go to Snake. Now, this isn't because I'm very biased, but because there's a lot of good Snake players at the top level. My top five is going to be Apollo Kage, MVD, Dio, Hurt, and Kronos. I think Alan Disc got to be the honorable mention there as well, because even though he's probably a top five Snake, like in actuality, he just doesn't have the results under his belt for me to really feel it's fair to take a spot away from one of the other players. So we're going to keep Alan Disc as an honorable mention. But if he starts going to more events, if there's more events for him to even go to in Mexico, which there will be, I'm very excited about that, then he will probably get moved onto this list. Starting off with Kronos, though, his big two runs are going to be at Battle of BC and Let's Make Big Moves. Both of those losers run where he gets wins on players like Zomba, Leon, Meister, WebJP at Let's Make Big Moves. Battle of BC is able to get wins on Shaddock, Samuel, Embo Z, Z, and Neo for a 25th there. So it was a 17th place at Crown the Third wins on Neo again at that tournament, as well as Kirash and Grease the Almighty. So there is a lot of good results from Kronos. He does have a couple lower ones, though, especially from Genesis. That's where a lot of the same players did bad, though. So we're not even going to talk about Genesis. When we mentioned Genesis with Snake players, though, just assume that they either were at the tournament or they got like 65th or something worse because Snake players did it really bad there for some reason. You hurt as well. One of the new age Snake, there's a lot of them, but having a lot of success recently. Starts off the year not as strong, you know, 65th MA Sumo top 11, then it's a 13th at Kalen 5, 33rd at Delta 4, not amazing, then a 13th at Kagari V10 
with nine set wins in a row in the loser side of the bracket. One of the best losers runs we've seen in Smash Ultimate gets a bunch of good wins. And then like the next weekend, I guess not the next weekend, the next big tournament he goes to, which is Talon 6, he wins the entire event, only dropping one set to Yara, double eliminating him, as well as getting wins on players like Komei and Atelier. I think Hurt's probably the best stake in Japan right now. Maybe not for the whole season, because Dio's had a pretty decent season. We'll talk about that in literally just a second. But Hurt has been looking incredible as of late. Like, he is an insane talent. Feels like the second that Shogun left, Hurt replaced him right away as one of the best sanctions in Japan. You also have Ake, who's been doing really well in Japan as well. So shout out to both of those guys. Speaking of Japanese stakes, you have Dio, who I would say is probably the most recognizable Japanese stake at this point, as well as having the highest peak of a Japanese stake with a seventh place at Urubor SP9. At least at the major level, he's able to get wins on Mia, Osimo, and Noi for seventh place, as well as a bunch of other wins. That is an insane place, but no, everything else hasn't been as strong. He does have a 17th place at Kagura B10, where he gets wins on Masa and Riddles, which is crazy, but those are definitely going to be his two strongest performances, and to be fair, some really strong performances to have. Sorry, I had a bit of mic issues there, but our next snake player is going to be MBD. MBD hasn't had a ton of majors this season. He has Genesis. Again, we don't talk about that for snake players. A ninth place at level of Exo, which is actually pretty good, and a 13th place at Collision, which is definitely his best major performance of the day, or at least this season, with wins on MK, Big Boss, Cola, and True Love. But what really impresses me about MBD are his regional performances, because he actually has a couple really good ones. Most notably, CEO with a fourth place there wins over Kobe, TM7 Zap, Grape, Beast Mode, Paul, and Riku, and a second place at DreamHack Dallas, where he wins 10 sets in a row over players like Mude, Stackpo, Lima, Johnny, Caden, like Skeleton. He got so many sets, crazy losers run from him at that tournament. So MVD, not a player that we've seen really show up super big at the major level yet this season, but the regional level, he's showing he still has the talent. He's still able to get some of those impossible wins. Like a Mudeis win is really tough to get. Some of these players that he's beaten are the best of the best. So even though he hasn't done it in a major, I still have a lot of faith in MVD as a player. And hopefully we just see more major events from him this next season because again we only had three that's not too many and one of them he got 13th place at the other one he got ninth place at like he still has been doing good at the regional level he just hasn't been going to it a ton or rather at the major level so excited to see mvd going to more events if he does do that but the best rep of the character is definitely apollo Kai. the rest of the order it's pretty tough to say like i'd say mvd dio and her are your like two to four area then Kronos and ike are five to six and then alan dis is unrankable but apollo kage he's definitely number one 13th place at let's make big moves we don't talk about genesis he gets a second place at frosty fausting with wins on riddles second place at sweet spot seven i think he only loses to onan and skills at the event ninth place at collision First place at Battle for the South. He gets a seventh place at Summit with wins on MK Leo and Glutzing, which is insanity. Fifth place at Low Tide City. 33rd at Battle BC is a little bit of a low performance, as well as a 17th place at Honeypot 5, but that's just a regional to be fair. Then he has a second place at Gateway Legends. After losing really early on to Yoda Cage, he goes on a crazy loser run, winning, I believe, 10 sets in a row to get to the grand finals where he does lose to Luis, but he still gets a set win on him as well as wins on Lima, Death Spade, and Base Mage. He wins Cost 2023. He wins Battle of Z Umad over Zamba. He gets fifth place at CEO, ninth place at Crowd. I mean, Apollo Kage's results are insane. He is definitely the best stake that we have right now in this game. He's pushing so many things further into the future, but it's again, one of the few titles in Smash Ultimate that even though Apollo Kage is clearly the best snake and he's been doing so good, he's only getting better, all the other snake players are still catching up to him. They're still making him work for that title. That's why I think Snake is definitely the best character in Smash Ultimate, at least in terms of their top player reps. Our next character is going to be Samus, and actually a little bit of trouble picking the top five. Not because there wasn't players to pick from, there was a lot, but because that number five spot is a little bit of contention for me. The top four in no real order is Yara, Siski, Quick, and Icy Mist, but for that number five spot, it's between Teaser and Tora. Now, Teaser's peaks are 13th place at Battle for the South, 7th place at Low Tut City, and 17th places at Momocon 2023 and DreamHack Dallas 2023. So those are some pretty good results. They are all at the regional level, though. You have Tora, who has a 17th place at Wave 4, and the rest of his results aren't amazing, except for his 5th place at Umavor SP9, which is one of the peaks this character has just gotten in general, with wins on I'm, Aaron, Munikin, and Atorier. So I am going to say that Tora is in that number 5 spot for Samus because that 1-1 one, one is so incredible, but I think Teaser is definitely a player that should be mentioned. You have Icy Mist as well. Now, Icy Mist hasn't been performing at the major level. To be fair, she's only been to one major, which was a 65th at Collision, which is not amazing. Still gets wins on players like Orion, though, which is crazy that they played that early on. But at the regional level, Icy Mist is built different, specifically Xanadu Homecoming, where she was able to win it over players like PK Chris, Enhanced PV, No Tech, and Double Elimination 
eliminating Quanville Dingle Lingleton. Second place at Sham Grab 2. Seventh place at Gateway Legends. Wins over players like Sen, Ice Knight, Wild Jinx. Fourth place at Phoenix Down. Second place at The Gamble. Like, she has been barmining these regional events. Looking super scary there. I really want to see more of Ice Miss at a major because... In NA in general, you're not seeing Samus played a ton as a character. I would say your top drops are definitely Icy Mist and Teaser, but they don't have a ton of major results across the board. Next up is going to be Yara. Now, Yara is the best Samus player in the world, but I want to talk about who the best Samus in Europe is, so I'll save Quick and Siski for a little bit longer. But for Yara, he starts off the season with a 33rd at Umabor, which is pretty weak, especially when compared to Tora's 5th place there. So at the start of the season, highly in contention. Who is the best Samus player in Japan? And then you have Yara, who gets a 7th place at Mason with top 11, 33rd of Asuma top 12, which is admittedly not super great, but then a 13th at Calgary B10 with wins over T and Spargo. He 3 0 Spargo, by the way. That was an insane set. 17th place at Battle of BC wins on Sparkle Quick, 3 on the Ditto. Dark Wizzy, as well as a second place at both Talon 6 and It's Kushima. I'm sorry if I butchered that one, but he was able to get wins on players like Umeki, Takara, Hurt, Kome throughout those tournaments, and a third place at CEO with wins on players like Yosufu, Beast Mode, Paul, and Riku. Yara started off the season mid. Maybe not even being the best Samus player in Japan to be the best Samus player in the world. He does not care. He plays this character different than everyone else. His levels of aggression, the way he mixes in downer especially, makes him such a scary player. But let's talk about who is that number one Samus in Europe. Now, unfortunately, Europe hasn't had a ton of majors this year. They've actually only had one where Quick does overperform Siski. Quick ends up getting a third place at King of Fields. Both their best wins being over Karama, and then Sissy gets a fourth place, so it is still very close. You also have both the players going to Battle of BC, but before that, you have Quick getting a 17th place at Las Vegas Big Boost. You have Sissy getting a 17th place at Genesis. You do have Sissy getting a 33rd collision, but you also have Sissy getting a 9th at Battle of BC, whereas Quick ends up getting 33rd at Battle of BC. So I would say that Sissy is the better Samus player in Europe, second best in the world. Also, we got to talk about that Battle of BC run because he gets wins on Jazo, Riddles, and Yoshi. Shidora only losing to Akala and Shoe Tone. Like Siski's year, it's still been really, really good. Again, 17th place, 33rd, 9th, and 4th place at major events is pretty good to me. Quick, same thing. 33rd isn't as strong at Battle of BC. 17th place is a pretty good placement at Let's Make Big Moves. And then that 3rd place at King of Fields, only losing to 1st and 2nd place. Both these guys have been looking amazing, and they haven't even had the chance to prove themselves on the home turf too much they have at the regional level but we're mainly focused on the major level when we can be so if there is more tournaments going into the later year in europe which there will be by the way very excited about that i think we're going to see those guys perform even more and potentially take that title of best sams from yara but to be fair they're gonna have to do a lot of work because yara is very good Next character is going to be Mario with my top five being Karama, Now, Snow, Dark, Wizzy, and Ludo. And I want to give an honorable mention to Devaris or Audio. I think he changed his name to that recently. But regardless, amazing player. We just don't see him a ton at the top level. Starting off with Ludo, though, who definitely has the best result of a ninth place at Major Upset with wins on Sandfall. Sam Jackal and Quinn that Jackal one's got to be feeling especially good right now as well as a 13th place at Wave Dash now the rest of the results haven't been quite to the same standard but I think if Ludo is able to play the way he was at Major Upset that's some of the cleanest Mario gameplay I have literally ever seen like whenever I see Ludo in a bracket now I'm going to be seriously worried about who is in his path because if he unlocks that power again he is going to go absolutely off like again he looked incredible at that tournament I highly recommend you watch some of those VODs if you want to see some good Mario gameplay but next up I want to talk about Dark Wizzy now Dark Wizzy doesn't have the flashy Mario results, but he is so consistent. For reference, his worst placements are 33rd at Genesis and Collision. He is 25th at Let's Make Big Blues, 9th place at Frosty Fausting, 17th place at Major Upset, 17th place at Dreamhack San Diego, 25th at Battle of BC, 33rd at Game of Legends, also one of his worst results, 17th place at Crown the Third, 9th place at Cost, and a 17th at Hyrus, where he does DQ in the loser side of bracket, so could have even gone further in that bracket. I feel like Dark Wizzy doesn't get talked about a lot in America, or at least enough anymore, because he isn't getting into those top eights at the major level, but his results are still really good. He's still picking up good wins along the way. Still an incredibly scary player. Like, his set versus Aqua at Battle of BC was really close. Game 5 there played out of his mind at that tournament in general. It also lost to Yara as well. Losing to Aqua and Yara for 25th is kind of just a little bit unlucky. So, Dark Wizzy still an amazing player. Even though he isn't hitting those same peaks like he used to be way earlier on in the game, I definitely think he still can. Next up is going to be Snow. Now, the start of the season is an amazing one. I care about, though, are his recent results. Recently, he has a 5th place at Sumabato SP36 
and 39, which are two pretty big regionals, a second place at Sumovato SV38, and his best major to date with a ninth place at Mesuma Top 13 wins on Shori, I'm, and Shiryuki. Snow is a player that has come up seemingly out of nowhere as of late and has just started cranking out these amazing results. Mesuma is going to be his only really good one at the major level, but the regionals have been really good from. I think he could steal that title up best tomorrow in Japan from now, though it is still going to be a little bit because now has a bunch of good results throughout the season. Speaking of that, let's talk about Now's career because my lord, it is good. 13th place at Genesis 9. Kind of where it all starts with a wins on Chag, Kree, Goblin, Sigma, and Vendetta. And then next weekend, or at least the next major weekend, 5th place at Kagura B9 with wins on players like Hito, Level 1, Jazzo, Maikai, just insanity. Now, since then, it hasn't been as good. He does have a 3rd place at Thomas Suma, 13th place at Kellen 5, 17th place at May Suma, top 12. It's not like the placements you're getting are drastic. They're not really, really bad. He hasn't been like doing inconsistently. He does have a 65th at Kagura B10 as well, but that's definitely the biggest outlier because besides that, he's a 25th at May Suma, top 13. So he doesn't even have a ton of majors in general, but half of them are amazing. Half of them, though, especially again towards the latter end, have not been as strong. So hopefully now is able to continue how he was doing in the start of the year in the later half of the season, like the last couple of weeks we have left, and then going into the second half of the year very excited to see now continue playing though he is a really interesting player to watch he is absolutely insane again watching his run at Kagurubi he looked amazing at that term that's some of the best Mario that we've ever seen but we got to talk about the best Mario that we've ever seen because that goes to Karama this guy is built different with this character like he looks absolutely insane he has this really nice run at Summit getting a fourth place there but he also has a 17th place at Genesis and Collision which are his worst placements by the way 5th place at Major Upset with a win on Zomba, Fizzman, and JDV. 2nd place at DreamHack San Diego. 7th place at Crown Wins on Apollo Kage, T, and Dark Wizzy. And a 5th place at King of Fields, double eliminated by Samus there. So Kurama, I would definitely say, is the best rep of Mario right now. His movement is just the best. His combos are the best. Everything about him is literally just the best. He looks absolutely ridiculous i think now and snow could potentially take that title but they're gonna have to see who is the best mario in japan first again now a little bit more inconsistent right now and so is just the up and comer is still gonna be able to keep it up is now gonna be able to recover how he was doing towards the start of the year all things that we're gonna have to wait and see but as it stands right now karama is definitely the best rep of the character and our final character in full for today's video is going to be Wolf with our top five reps being Ouch, Jackal, Masha, Atelier. And for that number six spot, it's between Moxie and Aura for the number five spot as well. And both their peaks are actually at the same event of Genesis with a 33rd there. Moxie with wins on Chag and Mars and Orion with wins on players like Legit and Naughty. So... Not as good of wins from Orion, but still they are getting the same place. When you also have Orion performing at some regional events like Icarus and Slyland, fourth and fifth of those events respectively. You have Moxie, who also has 33rd at Major Upset and 33rd at Battle of BC, where they're able to get wins on Tickle and Larry Lur. So whoever you want to give that title of number five wolf to, I think it could honestly go both ways. You also do have Moxie using a little bit more Mennonite than you would Orion using his secondary character, which I'm pretty sure is still Dr. Mario, which is really funny that he has that in general. But whoever you want to put as number five wolf, it doesn't really matter. They're both amazing players, but our number four role for me is going to be Atodia. And Atodia is definitely the number four role because he has a lot of inconsistencies in his bracket, unfortunately, or just in his career. He has a 49th at Delta 4, 33rd at Kagaribi, 10th. 25th at Mesuma top 12 and I know those don't even sound like terrible placements but when you've seen his peak which are second places at Delta 3 7th place at Umabora SP9 13th place at Kagura B9 wins on players like Ken Zach Ray Abadongo Mia Suinoko Riziasu Atorie when he's playing at his best some of the best peaks of Wolf in Smash Ultimate but he's a little bit more of an inconsistent player he also has been using a little bit more PT recently which I personally love and I think that's something that is going to be good and help him out a lot but obviously it's going to make him fall a little bit further in terms of who the best wolf is but Atorie been a little bit inconsistent still has some of the highest peaks of the characters overall still absolutely amazing with wolf too our third best wolf is gonna be masha and his best results are at the start of the season and the end of the season he has a seventh place at japan 24 with wins on hiro abadongo alice masa and fatari really nice event there then he has a 33rd at kagurubi 49th at Mesuma Top 12, which aren't amazing, but ends it really strong with a 9th place at Kagura B10, the most important event of the year, with wins on YN, Lai, Kameme, and Dio. So Masha, like Atorie, has a couple inconsistencies, but his peak with the character is really, really strong. But let's finally talk about a wolf that isn't inconsistent, but doesn't quite have the peaks. That's going to be the GOAT himself, Ouch. Now, Ouch's only bad placement is going to be his Battle of BC, where he ends up getting a 33rd place, but it could have gone 
very differently. He was like one hit away from beating MK Leo, one scenario away from beating MK Leo. Very close set right there. So he clearly is one of the best of the best. He also has a ninth place at Major Upset with wins on Bombastic, Off Sign, and Aaron, and a ninth place at Genesis with wins on Orion, Jay Nizzle, Kameme, now Marvelous Marco, and a couple other players. Ouch is insane. I really think he is one of the players that is going to be the future of this game. And once he gets his second top eight, because obviously his broke out tournament, he got a third place at Battle of BC4, I believe it was. Since then, he hasn't been able to get a top eight, but the second that he does, I think the ceiling is going to be absolutely broken and he's going to skyrocket to like a top 10, top 20 player because he's just outside of that boundary right now. Autism player I have a lot of faith in. And speaking of players I got a lot of faith in, sorry I had a bit of a mic issue, but our final wolf player as well as our best wolf player is going to be Jackal. He starts off a little bit weaker, 25th at both Genesis, Level of Expo, and Collision. And then he has second place at both CT, GamerCon, and PAX East. So second place in those tournaments, pretty good. 25th at Genesis and Collision aren't even that bad either, but he gets his first top eight of the season at Major Upset. And Jackal's been a player that has had top eights before it's just been a little bit since major upset he went from not getting one from apex where he got second place that tournament all the way to major upset next tournament wouldn't you know it second place at crown at least the next major event second place at crown with wins on chase spargo onan mk leo onan again and shoe tone after losing to him in the winner side of bracket that run at crown is one of the best runs we have seen from wolf period jackal is absolutely insane i think he's gonna win a major probably pretty soon again after that crown one, I really think that he can't do anything. He is a little bit inconsistent. Ninth place at high res after crown, but to be fair, he lost to Quid and Zomba, the guy who got first place at crown to get a ninth place at that event. So it's not even like he's taking bad losses. Jackal is an amazing player. Again, I think he's probably going to win a major very soon, and I would say that he is the best wolf in the world right now. And I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Now, were all those characters necessarily top five best characters in Smash Ultimate? At least the top five best represented characters in Smash Ultimate? No, I think they're all top 10 best represented, but there's a couple characters that I didn't mention for the sake of this video. I think the biggest one I'd have to talk about is Aegis. Now, Aegis technically has Cosmos, technically has MKLeo, technically has Spargo. Then you have Shutone and like maybe Cloudy or Space as your other rep, but that sounds absolutely busted but leo doesn't play the character a ton spargo doesn't play the character a ton cosmos doesn't go to a ton of stuff so there's a couple of characters like that i don't want to mention and there's probably just a character that i forgot as well because there's like 80 plus characters in this game and like i said in the intro every single one of them is played at least at some level in smash ultimate so if there's a character that you felt is more deserving on this list please let me know down below maybe if i get enough character requests i'll make a second video on that if you guys enjoy the first one and yeah that's all i'm gonna say sportsman absolutely lately thank you guys for everything and i will see you all in the next video Bye bye